In the world of Cyberpunk 2077, and more specifically Night City, there is a rocker boy by the name of Johnny Silverhand, portrayed by Keanu Reeves. In 2023, Arasaka Tower was destroyed in an incident known as the Night City Holocaust, involving Johnny Silverhand and a nuclear device that incinerated 12,000 people within the vicinity, and fatally injuring thousands more from the fallout. Some of Silverhand's reasons for this are to fight against corporate colonialism, as mentioned within the game. Though Silverhand dies during this incident after being intercepted, he survives through sci-fi tech through an engram in the year 2077. For further context that I feel is useful to this case, Night City is run by mega corporations such as Arasaka, Militech, and others, through which even though there is a government, it is corrupt and does not have as much influence as the corporations. These corporations have their own military forces. In a sense, they act as their own states. Furthermore, Silverhand was a veteran of a war ran by a corrupt government that had left him without an arm, now a silver cybernetic arm. Other details based on the game may be presented later. The charge is, Silverhand bombed, committed a terrorist act, Arasaka Tower without warrant. Silverhand's answer will be, I was justified for the bombing of Arasaka Tower. The question will be, was Silverhand justified in bombing Arasaka Tower? Silverhand's reason is, Arasaka and the other corporations have been under control of a system that exploits and does far more harm to the people than the actions that I partook to rupture that system to free the people. The prosecutor's answer, the corporations and mainly Arasaka, Silverhand should not have acted in this harsh manner. The point for decision is, Granted that Arasaka and other corporations have been in control of a corrupt system and government, exploiting that system to the harm of the people should Johnny Silverhand have bombed Arasaka Tower. For my case, I will use the advice that Cicero offers for retorting the charge in the defense of Johnny Silverhand. As he states, a retort of the charge occurs when the defendant admits the act of which he is accused, but shows that he was justified in doing it because he was influenced by an offense committed by the other party. I'll be following the advice he lays out for the side of the defense, such as through magnifying the culpability and audacity of the person the defense, Silverhand, lays blame to, which is the corporations, as well as placing the scene vividly before the eyes of the jury. Then I will show how Silverhand punished the offense of the corporations more lightly than they deserved, after which I will show how intolerable the actions of the prosecutor, the corporations, are and how Silverhand found a court unnecessary and inexpedient to wait for a trial to take place. It is indisputable the actions that were taken by Johnny Silverhand in 2023 that put him here today. Accused of an act of terrorism that led to the destruction of Arasaka Tower and casualties that ranged in the thousands, at first glance, as I have mentioned, some, perhaps you of the jury, will see this as a mere act of terrorism caused by some rocker boy in Night City who wanted chaos and destruction. However, this seemingly unjustifiable act has more than meets the proverbial eye. To the contrary, the action that was undertaken by Silverhand was far from unjust, but has justice in the heart of the action, through which he committed this action to punish those who are the true culprits, who pushed him this far to commit this act. Silverhand committed this act against those who commit far worse actions and continue to commit them to this day. Silverhand committed this act as a way to fight back against the tyranny of not only the Arasaka Corporation, but that of Militech and other such corporations as well. Who are they to say that Silverhand's action is unjustifiable? Night City today continues to suffer, not from the action caused by Silverhand in 2023, but rather by the corporations who wish to punish someone who saw injustice in his homeland and saw no other way to stop it. Thousands were lost to the actions of Silverhand, yes, that is undeniable, but what of the many more thousands, or even millions, lost through the exploitation of the people by Arasaka Corporation, by Militech, or other corporate influences? These corporations hold the reins of the people, the reins of the land, and cast them aside after their use is complete. Lands ravaged not by a nuclear fallout, but by its constant abuse and misuse. Night City is a city under control by these corporations, and what have they done to show their service to the people. Here is what they did. They let gang violence rise to a point of constant war in the streets, in which the daily lives of citizens are characterized through the hope of not catching a stray bullet. 
They have stripped the land from those who had rightly owned it for their own gains without giving back to those in need. Many people in Night City and beyond have had their lives ruined or taken by these corporations, as seen within Johnny Silverhand himself. A veteran of the Second Central American conflict, he witnessed his friends die in a corrupt war justified as a war on drugs. In reality, this war was merely to gain further imperialistic control of the hemisphere, for more power and gain for a government under the influence of corporations. Here he lost his arm and now must live with a cybernetic that reminds him of how the government he had once trusted betrayed his ideals and cast him aside after the war. Silverhand is but one example. Silverhand felt, after the years of living within a system controlled by corporations and corrupt government, that he could no longer stand by and watch these cruel offenses take place, cruel enough that he could not even stand and testify before a trial, and had to take matters into his own hands. After living years in a system that had killed potentially millions through its neglect of citizens, through the influence that it had with its control over the government and wealth gained through that exploitation, Silverhand felt that the only way to liberate the people from this intolerable system was through destroying Arasaka Tower. His action only killed thousands, and dismantled only but a tower of the mega corporate empire of Arasaka who has towers all over the world. If anything, his retaliation against this control was not enough as a punishment for the crimes that have still gone unanswered by these corporations, for they have affected and still affect millions to this day. So maybe we should hold Silverhand accountable for the actions that he took, but we cannot forget the actions that have been taken by the mega corporations who wish to punish Silverhand for trying to free a people who are oppressed under their control. Much of the strategy I used pertains to the Council for Defense for retorting the charge. In this section, I supported my attempt to lay blame on someone else by magnifying the culpability and audacity of the person by mentioning how the corporations are continuing to cause the suffering of Night City. Such as when I mentioned how Night City today continues to suffer not from the action caused by Silverhand in 2023, but rather by the corporations who wish to punish someone who saw injustice in his homeland and saw no other way to stop it. I placed a vivid scene with an intense display of indignation through the description of what was done to Night City by the corporations and other offenses, such as how I mentioned they let the gang violence rise to a point of constant war in the streets in which the daily lives of citizens are characterized through the hope of not catching a stray bullet. I showed how the punishment, Johnny destroying Arasaka Tower, was not a punishment fit enough for the crimes of the corporations as they have caused much more damage and loss. In the paragraph that I mention, if anything, his retaliation against this control was not enough as a punishment for the crimes that will have gone unanswered by these corporations. And I describe the actions of the corporations as intolerable, and intolerable enough that Silverhand could not simply wait for a trial. As mentioned, Silverhand felt after the years of living within a system controlled by corporations and corrupt government that he could no longer stand by and watch these cruel offenses take place. Cruel enough that he could not even stand and testify before a trial. Though I mainly focused on retorting the charge, there is also a sense of the honorable and the advantageous. I showed how some of the actions by the corporations were dishonorable and disadvantageous in the way that they use their power and their fortune, the effects, the gangs, etc. And how Silverhand's actions may have been actually advantageous and, in a, in a sense, even honorable, as he did it out of a sense of justice.